Hot take guys, I think we need to bring back shame. Some people are posting some absolutely shameless content online and not thinking twice about it. And some of that content might be considered scandalous. And so in this video, we're doing a deep dive into TikTok's most shameful scandals. And let me tell you right now, it gets crazy. So please make sure to follow me on all of my socials. And with that said, let's get into the video. So first things first, I don't use TikTok for basically any reason. So my opinions today are going to be as unbiased as they potentially could be. I don't really have much skin in the game. At least it's going to be as unbiased as it could be based off my research. Having said that, the first story we have today is Nessa Barrett dancing to the Quran. So this scandal is centered around Nessa Barrett, who in April 2020 decided to make a TikTok of her dancing to the sound of what she thought was a man singing after finding this song on her For You page, at least according to her record of events. She and a friend were scrolling on TikTok trying to brainstorm ideas when she came across the song, which if I can interject, what does brainstorming ideas for TikTok mean? Today, am I going to dance to a song or lip sync to a song? So many possibilities, but back on topic, she didn't know it yet, but she was about to throw it back to someone reciting the Quran. People saw the video and many of them got upset. They found this to be very disrespectful and left various messages voicing their distaste for the video. And so Nessa Barrett took it down. And that would have been it, if not for another grave mistake. And by that I mean she live streamed her apology, which has since gone down in history as yet another horribly botched apology because people took note of something particular that she said, which was that because her stepmother and step-siblings are of Egyptian blood, that gave her the pass, which to many people had the same energy as the classic I have black friends type deal. So trying to lean on her stepmom's heritage really didn't work out the way that she would have wanted it to. On top of this, she's quoted as saying, I think I'm sorry in what can only be classed as one of the more strange apologies I've seen. She seemed quite disinterested in honesty, but I guess it worked out for her in the end because she's since gone from 6.5 million followers to 19.5. So she's remained incredibly popular. So that was just one story of many I have for you today. So let's move on to get to the rest. Speaking of Egypt, we need to talk about a scandal where Egyptian women a few years ago were arrested for debauchery, and this could arguably be the biggest scandal of all on the scroll, at least on a personal level. What's even more scary is that I haven't heard shit about it, despite it being a horrible attack on individual liberty and women's rights. If you don't know what debauchery is, it's defined on Google as excessive indulgence in sex, alcohol or drugs which in this case was referring to famous Egyptian TikTok creators Hanin Hassam and Moada al-Adam's indulgence in promoting sexual content, which was an arrestable offence because apparently it was attacking society's values. So this was less a scandal on the part of creator or even TikTok as a platform, but actually the Egyptian justice system in relation to creators on TikTok, specifically female creators. It was reported that Hanin Hassam had been arrested in April 2020 after posting a video on TikTok telling her 1.3 million followers that girls should go onto a different app, Likey, where they could make live videos and make some serious money. These women were initially accused of inciting debauchery and attacking public morals. And you probably aren't going to like how this all turned out because while I read on The Guardian that they were acquitted for their crimes in January 2021, the prosecutors then played a more serious card and accused them of human trafficking, which led them to once again have to stand up in front of the court, and this time they would not walk away free. With both Hassam and al Haddam being sentenced to two years in prison and being fined the equivalent of roughly $16,000 or £12,500. Human rights activists claim that this comes as a recent crackdown on female social media influencers. They argue that the charges that Hassam and at least 11 other women with millions of followers have faced since 2020 violate the rights to privacy, freedom of expression, non-discrimination and bodily autonomy. So while there might have been a sharp outcry to what was going on here, it wouldn't matter anyway because the women are firmly behind bars now. This is the kind of thing you don't really hear on the news, but at least in my opinion, this is something I would consider absolutely scandalous and I wanted to bring some attention towards it. This is a bit strange, but Bella Porch might go down as having the worst tattoo on the internet because our next story surrounds this tat, which if you're unaware of it, if you've never seen it before, 
This tattoo is of the Japanese rising sun with a heart in the middle of it. Yeah, very dicey. I have no clue why she chose this tattoo, especially because she's a Filipino American, which if you've watched my Filipino urban legends video, you would know just a few of the atrocities that the Japanese Imperial Army marching under that flag would commit there. If you somehow don't know what the Japanese rising sun symbol is, back in World War II, Japan did not have the flag that we see them use today with the simple red dot on a white background. Instead, they would march under this flag, the rising sun, and as I said, they committed some of the worst atrocities ever seen in war. Seriously, a portion of their soldiers were next level evil, and many people do not like seeing this flag whatsoever, especially those who reside in countries that were under Japanese rule during the war years. Many people in fact put this symbol in the same camp as yet another famous World War II flag from the Axis which has since needed to be changed. So history lesson over, but this is one that Bella should have had before inking up her arm. Of course, there is the possibility that it was never intended to offend anyone. Porch has since come out and said, and I quote, I will have this tattoo removed or covered up. I did not know the history behind this tattoo and I will educate others about it. Which, to be honest, I believe. I don't think that anyone would risk the backlash that a tattoo like that would give them. It could have just been that she liked the design and didn't know the history, but then you'd also have to ask what was she doing during history class? Because everyone studies World War II and the Japanese Imperial Army was a very important part of that conflict. She's never come out and said what the tattoo meant to her, but considering that she said she was going to get it covered or removed, I guess it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Oh man, this one is just the wildest, and if you haven't heard of it before, I'm sure this is going to outrage you. 100% a shameful scandal, the headline of our next story is Zoe Laverne kisses a 13 year old fan. No, this isn't a typo, no I didn't misspeak. If you're not familiar with Zoe Laverne, she is an insanely popular TikToker with over 20 million followers, but before that she was very popular on TikTok's unofficial predecessor, Musical.ly take things back a few years though and in November 2020 her online career was almost ended when in a leaked video it surfaced that the then 19 year old was caught kissing a 13 year old fan. Insider would report on this incident a year later where they wrote in an apology Laverne said she caught feelings for the young fan who goes by Connor Joyce online. Laverne blamed the interaction on the pair becoming best friends and denied that she'd been grooming Connor, a term used when an older person builds a close relationship to manipulate and exploit a younger person. For teenage influencers clinging on to fast-paced online fame, controversy can be a good thing. TikTok stars like Bryce Fool and Danielle Cohen have cultivated profitable personas as troublemakers and provocateurs, and even family-friendly influencers like Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Rae are boosted by relationship drama. But there's a tipping point for influencer scandals, especially those involved in inappropriate relationships with underage fans. And I think I need to address the elephant in the room here and ask why Zoe Laverne was allowed to carry on despite the grooming allegations. And it wasn't because she was a great dancer or content creator. It was because she was a woman. Because if it was leaked that a 19 year old guy was out there kissing his 13 year old fans, his career would be over quicker than the guys in Spy Kids 3. And I'm sorry, but saying that they were best friends is particularly incriminating, because a 19 year old and a 13 year old have nothing in common whatsoever. What do they even talk about? Obviously Laverne faced backlash, but a few years on now and she's weathered the storm, with this merely being a dent in her reputation. She would become a mother in 2021 and came under fire yet again for selling baby pictures later that year, but that was more of a bit of drama than an actual scandal. The Connor Joyce situation though, definitely a scandal in my books. So next up we have the CNMA scandal. Buckle up people. Because as someone who's as inactive in the TikTok scene as I am, even I knew about this one. Mainly down to the apology video, but still a lot of people know that this happened. So if you haven't heard it to death already, I'm going to tell the story and give my two cents. So let's have a little recap on things. So Jack Wright and Sienna May were, and still are, incredibly popular TikTokers. And starting in October 2020, they appeared together in a number of their online posts. So much in fact that their fans started theorizing that the two of them might have been entering into a relationship with each other. 
They were coming up together, but not for long. Because after a while, people started to notice that the two's collaboration frequency suddenly took a sharp decline. Initially, people thought it was because the Hype House was shooting a Netflix show which the two were both set to star in. But soon, a curveball would be thrown into the situation when Jack Wright's friend Mason Rizzo dropped a bombshell on Twitter accusing CNMA of sexually assaulting Jack. Wright's brother James would retweet the accusation, which Sienna immediately denied. And before long, Mason would take down the tweet saying that the ordeal would be dealt with offline. Sienna would lose hundreds of thousands of followers, and she would soon respond to the allegations saying that while she was in love with Jack, the feelings were not mutual. But she did not assault him, and her passion for the boy was just misconstrued for desperation. Things would soon take yet another sharp left turn though, when an apparent witness of the event, Lachlan Hanneman, would come forward a few days later and post a video on TikTok as it showed a seemingly extremely inebriated Jack Wright passed out on the couch as Sienna May straddled him, making out with him, and reaching for his privates. Lachlan said that quickly after recording the video, he separated the two of them. In response to this, Sienna May would send out cease and desist letters, and would once again defend herself, saying that Jack was not passed out in the video, but was in fact awake, saying, the way that Jack's friend narrated this video, I'll admit, looks so weird. If he was unconscious, why did his arm move when you got up? And also, why was he kissing me back? The entire scandal would have serious impact on the aforementioned Netflix show, and the two of them were essentially omitted from it. A few months later, in January of this year, Jack Wright finally broke his silence, and came out with a 17 and a half minute video titled, What Sienna May Did To Me which has since garnered over 20 million views with overwhelming support from his audience. In the video, Wright claimed that what Hanneman had said was true, that he was indeed unconscious, and that what Sienna May did to him was unconsented. The main takeaway of the comments of this video being that sexual assault can happen to anyone regardless of gender. Sienna May's legal representatives would reaffirm May's stance that she did none such thing and the entire series of events were in an attempt to slander and defame her character and reputation. And this isn't even to mention the apology video that she did in which she performed an interpretive dance to reflect her feelings on the situation. This interpretive dance has since been deemed potentially the worst apology video of all time. It would be like if after the allegations against Call Me Carson came out, he would drop a video doing the Macarena. It seemed horribly insensitive to Jack Wright. If you want my two cents on the situation, someone who is far, far removed from this creator sphere, her dropping that video, to me, is proof that she did it. Because no sane person would do what she was accused of and then come out with an interpretive dance to, I guess, apologize. It leads me to believe that she is guilty. Since then, both of their careers have carried on. Again, you might want to point to double standards here, because while her character has essentially been destroyed by the allegations that are widely believed, she still frequently posts to TikTok and still gets hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views per video. And if it were the other way around, just like the Zoe Laverne scandal, immediately the guy would be perma-cancelled. As it goes though, this might be the highest profile controversy TikTok has ever seen, and it's likely the highest profile scandal in this video. Oh, I hope you guys are ready for our next scandal, because if you go down onto your TikTok right now and you carry on scrolling, the content is going to change. But no matter what, whether you go down 5, 10, 15, I could probably make a bet with you right now that two things would stay the same, and that's that every single person that you're watching is attractive and rich. Because according to a report published by Sam Biddle, Paulo Victor Ribeiro, and Tatiana Diaz of The Intercept, they discovered that people deemed too poor, ugly, or disabled for the app actually got their content suppressed. That's right, we have online eugenics going on at our very fingertips. This is the real reason I don't have a TikTok account, because it wouldn't take five minutes for this ugly mug to get censored. Now, in response to this, TikTok has claimed that it's not trying to intentionally suppress the disabled poor or uggos, it just wants to try and make sure that they're not the victim of bullying or harassment. So they tend to keep them off the For You page compared to other creators that are more rich or attractive. According to The Intercept report, videos showing rural poverty, slums, beer bellies, and crooked smiles have all been suppressed among videos showcasing other undesirable traits. 
I mean, let's be fair here too though, many people on TikTok are only popular because they're attractive or rich in the first place. So even if clap people were to make TikToks of themselves dancing, they probably wouldn't get very far because people are just going to watch the more attractive person do the exact same thing. This report, however, if accurate, should be a cause for concern, because while the wealthy and attractive have always been at the forefront of media, to algorithmically eliminate the chances of less well-looking or poorer or disabled people being seen, I mean, that's kind of scary, right? I personally want to see some more clapped representation out there. Let's see what the guys with the beer bellies have to say, or let's give the guy with the lazy eye a break for once, you know? Now, this news does relate quite extensively to a scandal that we're going to talk about later on, so keep this in the back of your mind for later. With that said, that's all I have to say for this one, so let's move on to the next story. Of course, of everyone I'm going to discuss today, I don't think a single one of them is nearly as infamous as the Bidet. You see, I remember when TikTok had its first big burst of attention all of those years ago. It was absolutely the why do good girls like bad guys trend. And I remember seeing this dude, the Bidet, on all of the cringy TikTok compilations doing duets, which is what first drew my eye to the platform. Albeit a guy that does not use TikTok at all, he was the first TikTok celebrity. He was the first figure I personally recognized on the app, but if you look him up online, he's no longer seen as this hilariously nerdy dude that duets people's TikToks. You'll see that he's actually been accused all over the shop of being a predator. The story is that riding off the coattails of why do good girls like bad guys, people started to notice him on TikTok. He eventually gained a fairly sized following and immediately traded it all in to try and speak to underage girls. You give some people an inch, they will take a mile. This is what happened to the Bud A, or at least as per the rumors go. To continue the story, he used his newfound social media presence to DM underage girls, apparently attempting to solicit nudes. But can I ask something for a moment? Was anyone actually surprised? Like, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, but this dude kind of just looks like the type, you know? Just putting it out there. When he's duetting with the girls half of his age doing this shit, you can only question. Apparently, the police spoke to him about his activities, but to my knowledge, he was never arrested, though his TikTok account did get banned. And then, according to a Reddit post that I found during research for my banned Twitch video, I found out that he actually changed his username and then went online by the name Freak Alpha, streaming on Twitch for a while and also trying numerous other times to get a TikTok account, even though he had already been banned. But unfortunately for him, TikTok got him every time he wanted to set up a new account. And now, a few years on from him being exposed, he essentially has gone dark on the internet, remaining a dark mark on the early days of TikTok. The fact of the matter is, when your first recognizable creator gets found out to be a predator, that's something I would call a shameful scandal. I think I'm going to dub this next scandal stupid challenges because over the course of TikTok's existence, there have been a number of challenges that have come out that were either outright dangerous to its participants or otherwise ill thought out, insensitive, ticking time bombs. And I'm not saying that this doesn't happen elsewhere on the internet. I think that the clearest examples of this are the salt and ice challenge that happened a couple of years ago that gave people burns on their skin. And at least the one that I'm most familiar with was on YouTube and it was Alfie Day's living off one pound for a day challenge, which was deemed as horribly insensitive and led to his infamous I'm not a Tory video, which was equal parts hilarious, but also unfortunate because it seemed clear that the guy was just a bit out of touch, but not malicious or anything. In terms of TikTok challenges though, where do we even begin? Let's see. We have DIY vampire fangs, in which people would super glue vampire fangs onto their teeth and then wouldn't be able to get them off. We also have the face wax challenge, in which people would cake their face with some sort of green wax for like beauty content. Like what the hell even is this? Who thought this would be a good idea? Anyways, we have the corn on the cob challenge, perhaps the most infamous of all of these, just because of the horrendous backfires that it produced. Then we have the cereal challenge, which is just where you make cereal in your mouth, and it goes without saying that this is a choking hazard waiting to happen. The skull breaker challenge? Do I need to even say more? We also have the frozen honey challenge, the milk crate challenge, and the penny challenge, just to name a few more. People have died, man. People have died. 
or seriously gotten injured doing stupid TikTok trends. And on the one hand, you might want to say, oh, Darwin Award. Like, if you're doing the Skull Breaker Challenge, that only comes along with accepting the possibility that you might break your skull. But on the other hand, most people doing these challenges are children, teens, and young adults that apparently don't know any better. I read online that the CDC estimated that 80 people have died due to the blackout challenge. Like, Guys, if the possibility is death, do not do these challenges. I can't believe I have to say this, but the fact that a number of young people are dying due to these dumb challenges is something that I just have to include in this video. It's scandalous that these trends can even exist in my books. Data collection allegations. I'm sure that anyone that uses TikTok might be aware of this one. It's all over the news. It's pretty mainstream knowledge. Now, whether this is true or false is still yet to be seen. It's thus far merely an allegation. There's been article after article describing how it might be taking your data and selling it to China in some sort of elaborate plan. Of course, we know that the social media app is owned by a company based in China, and with TikTok as large and as powerful as it is, cause for concern would be part of the course. Now, every social media company collects data. That's what cookies are. It's why you're always asked if your cookies can be tracked. But TikTok in particular has been accused of harvesting information from in-app messaging and even tracking the locations of its users. On top of this, compared to the average app, it's been accused of having way more permissions active when the user is on it. And if the user turns any of its permissions off, it is much more persistent to have them turn back on than any other social media app. This isn't what anyone hasn't heard before. But what you might not have heard before relates to our next story, and that's the claim that the app can be proven to be connected to the Chinese government because it suspiciously censors the same content that the Chinese government would also censor. There is evidence that TikTok downweights posts of political dissidents, LGBT people, disabled people as we discussed earlier, and certain African American hashtags. It needs to be said that this might not be the app's choice though, it might be mandatory. Because in January 2019, it came out that the Chinese government were going to hold social media apps accountable for the actions of their user base. One of those social media apps being TikTok. For this reason, topics and events that the government would want to sweep under the rug, such as the Hong Kong protests, Tibetan independence, the Xinjiang internment camps, or even the Uyghur genocide have all been censored on the platform. This would come into the mainstream when in 2019, Feroza Aziz would post a video disguised as a makeup tutorial, but within the video, she actually spoke about the Xinjiang internment camps. When this reached TikTok, they would have her account suspended, but later they would go back on their decision, stating that the initial suspension was due to a human error. The next year, the Times India claimed that TikTok was censoring content related to the Chinese-Indian border dispute and straying east from China, earlier this year it was discovered that while Russian content was banned in the West, Western content has actually been removed from Russian TikTok. And this should be seriously worrying, because if it happens in Russia, who's to say that this isn't happening elsewhere? The software project that unveiled this information, named Tracking Exposed, has come out to say that this could potentially be especially dangerous and cause what they've coined a splinter net because it means that important international news sources could be getting cut off from people living within authoritarian regimes. It concluded that TikTok has become a propaganda tool for the Kremlin and has cut off avenues of dissent. What does it mean for the future of free access to information? It's too early to say. However, if the accusations are true, if TikTok is censoring information and content that these governments would deem inappropriate, it's something that we should all be very worried by. And that's what I'll leave you with today. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and be sure to like the video. Also be sure to follow me on all of my socials, they are linked in the description. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.